Fit like a bee, Danny Min here, and welcome back to another episode of Transport Fever 2 Around the World in Time. In this episode today, we're going to be jumping on board our locomotion, our SNDR uh, loco that's full of coal. They are actually getting coal now. There's actually 252 coal waiting here, which is pretty good. So we're going to be jumping on board here, so let's do so. So on we go. There is the loco, shrouded in steam. So, extremely hazardous for our driver because steam is extremely hot. <laughs> but anywho, without further ado, let's get going. Well, maybe, maybe go up a touch. There we go. And we'll head down. So we're on board the locomotion made by Timothy Hackworth uh, and Robert Stephen. This was one of his first ever endeavours into locomotive design and build, so he obviously took from this and then went to go and make the iconic rocket, uh, which won the Rainhill Trials, which will be our next episode, I do believe, because that is the next, the next lot of trains on from 1825. So we're leaving the Bishop Coalfield... Uh, the Bishop Auckland coal field because the coal fields were located just sort of north and west a bit of Bishop Auckland uh, lots of coal there so that's where they mined it and they used the locomotion which we're on this SNDR local uh, to run coal back and forth from here to the the Stockton docks where it was then taken down the river out into the North Sea and transported to other places in the UK. So that's pretty cool. Uh, this is a quite a slow start. It's only 10 miles per hour, this section of track, uh, as we head out past the coal mines. And then once we get onto the open track, the, the train should be able to go at full steam, which is 20 miles per hour for this local. Not fast by today's standards, but a blistering pace by uh, standards in the 18 and 1825. So it's uh, it's pretty cool. We are getting slightly faster. I do believe that most of the locos up until about 1850 will sort of have this 20, 25, maybe even up to 30 miles per hour. So. Yeah, they're not that fast. And even though these routes, as I've said before, are quite short uh, in speed sort of terms, it's uh, it's quite a long, it's quite a long journey. It's a long ride. But there's plenty of scenery and stuff to see on the way. A few people there at the signal box as we cross over. And then once we pass here, yeah, once we pass this uh, this road here through the trees. Oh branch in the face quite nice there we go oh that's beheading because that branch is quite thick <laughs> yeah there's lots to see lots of scenery farms etc as we sort of head along obviously the the other coal uh, train is on this line somewhere i don't know where i think it's maybe down beside stockton and there are the passenger trains that i'm slightly weary that this train might get stuck behind Although I don't know yet. We'll have to wait and see. It'll be interesting if they do. Because now we're at the time where steam locomotives have now surpassed the speed of the, the horse trams or the, the horse trains. So it's quite interesting. Their top speed was 12 miles per hour, which was faster than the trains we had in 1802, 1804, etc. The Richard Trevithick trains. But nowadays, now in the, as we're sort of moving on to bigger and better locos, they are getting faster and they have surpassed our horses. So you can see why trains really took hold because obviously these trains are getting faster running on their tracks. They still had many problems. Uh, a lot of the locomotives were too heavy for the tracks that were already in place that were being used by the horses and there was a lot of boiler explosions uh, because it was quite a relatively new technology at the time I mean even in one of the descriptions for an early local that blew up that said that the engineer 
was sort of messing around with the the safety valve and i was actually astonished that the something like a safety valve was actually implemented and put in place <laughs> and that just left a chance but obviously these experiences uh, led to safer locomotive design that's the that's the only one good thing that comes from a sort of tragedy uh, especially transportation uh, tragedy is that you, you learn things you learn how it happened and then you can combat it from sort of happening again so here we go we're coming through Bishop Rock, uh, Auckland there are actually a great many people waiting at this passenger station but you can't see them they've sort of disappeared there's one of our stage coaches actually two of our stage coaches on the right hand side for the the inner city line few buildings we've got our Greggs on the left hand side no city would be complete without a Greggs I picked that building because it looked old <laughs> and then I didn't realize that it had a Greggs uh, <laughs> I didn't realise that it was a Greg's franchise <laughs> building, so I only noticed that in the, when I was recording the episode and the train went past and I saw it, uh, but when you look at it from behind it just looks like a standard shop. <laughs> so yeah, there's lots of uh, sort of early 1900s sort of era buildings and things like that, uh, but the architecture 18 from the 1800s to the 1900s is relatively the same. Everything is made of sort of either brown or sort of greyish brick. There are the medieval buildings. You can see off just to the left, exiting the screen, there's a medieval farmhouse there. The medieval buildings pack is brilliant. I love it. Ever since it popped into the workshop, I've been uh, using it non-stop. So it, it just fits in really good with the sort of stuff we're dealing with here. So here's the other local. It's about to run over a deer. Ah, the deer made it. Well done, deer. I don't know if you guys can see that, but I can see that, because I'm playing this in 4K. Uh, but you guys are only watching this in 2K, so I'm not sure if that deer, or whatever it was, would have been rendered in. But yeah, there's the other train heading back to pick up another load of coal. Magical. And then we are heading back. There's our little pond on the, the right-hand side there. Which is not actually water, it's just a water paint asset, so... Because as we know, as I've mentioned before, uh, Transport Fever 2 does not do water above sea level, unfortunately. And it would I wish they would actually do something for that, because it would make map design a hell of a lot better. In Transport Fever 1, uh, there was a mod where you could make lakes and rivers and stuff, by simply filling in, going onto the contours. So you go into your terrain profiler, uh, click on contours to bring up the contour lines on your map, and then you could select areas where the contour lines were, and that it would fill in water all around it, which was extremely brilliant. Uh, you couldn't use the water, ships and things couldn't use it, but it looked really great. It looked really good. But the water paint tools as well, uh, they are really good as well. And there's different variants, so you can have like flat calm water, or sort of rough or choppy water. So that's pretty cool as well. It works great. So it can give you the des desired effects of rivers and lakes and stuff, so that is pretty cool. I do believe the creators who made it have also just made another section, uh, another water tool that sort of gives you, uh, so you could have like waterfalls and things and it can be placed on slopes so that it doesn't sort of look out of place. It actually looks authentic like a river running downhill or a waterfall and stuff. So that's pretty cool. I'm going to have a look at that, play around with it, see if we can get some interesting things on our hillsides, etc. Because stuff like that is really good and that makes the maps look a, a hell of a lot more uh, better. It's amazing what a bit of trees and water can do to a map if they're added in the right places. Obviously it's not great if you just spam an entire map 
one of the trees. Like, obviously at the left side here, I've got a lot of buildings and trees and fences. Uh, and on the right hand side, there's nothing. There's no farms or buildings. And that's basically because I didn't want to build up too much because at some point I'll have to delete all this. Uh, I didn't want to just spam trees and farms everywhere. Trees are great, but they absolutely destroy frame rate because the trees actually do animate to a certain degree. They sort of shimmer around like they're being blown by wind. Uh, so unfortunately, more trees make some a map look better. But uh, unfortunately, more trees has the downside of uh, destroying frame rates, which is unfortunate. Here's one of our passenger trains, though, or one of our passenger horse uh, wagons, which is pretty cool. It's really great that someone added these in as well, because the horse tramways in the UK and Germany, France, etc., were quite well established by the 1800s, and there was lots of them. There was lots of tracks set out for horse tramways. It's pretty cool that we actually get to use them. So here we go, it's all downhill from here. We're only doing 18 miles per hour, which is odd. We should speed up to 20. Now, downhill physics is not a thing in transport fever. If a train tops out, tops out at 20 miles per hour, it's going to stay at 20 miles per hour. <laughs> it doesn't, gravity does not play a role in here. Ah, the other train is just behind it. Normally I'd be annoyed about that because they're not really spaced out that well, but this time I am not that bothered at all because there's so many people waiting at the passenger stations that every single, even if they're right behind each other or one is behind the other, it's going to get full load. There we go. I love the third class and the first class carriages there. Smart. It's very cool. Again, more of Steve M4's work. So he does really good work. And then he's got lots more steam engines that we can use through the years. And uh, we'll be, or there are other modders that do a lot of diesel work and electrics and some of the wagons and stuff. So that's going to be cool as well. But that stuff appears later, much later. We are very far off from getting diesel trains. I mean, we're only in the UK only in the year 1825. We will be heading over to Belgium soon. Belgium was the, the first country out with the UK to utilize uh, steam engines on a sort of commercial route. So that's gonna be kinda cool. I think it's the Patente, is that what it's called? And it was, it was sort of a, uh, an offshoot of uh, Robertson's uh, local, the the rocket. It was sort of developed around that, and I think he was actually there for the development of it. Uh, so yeah, Robert Stevenson got a lot, uh, got around a lot. He was in America, Europe. I mean that takes a long time, especially in 1825. There are no planes; you have to go by ship. Ships weren't very fast, so it was pretty amazing. He fairly got around, travelled well for the for the era that he lived in. So here we are coming to the port, there's the Zero Osta. There's the coal bunker to the right hand side. We've got some buildings here, we've got a palm tree on the left, an unfortunate side effect of the game trying to build uh, houses everywhere that it shouldn't. And then we are into into Stockton Halt or Stockton Dockyards. So we'll come out there. We shall push pause. There we go. It made a million. It made a million bucks in 18. Well, it's 1850, but really it should be 1825. So a million, a million dollars in 1825 is like what, like a billion dollars today. So that's pretty interesting. So we'll jump back on the train uh, and on its return journey uh, once it's emptied. So here we are back again. The lads are emptying 
our coal, our coal cauldrons, and the night is starting to creep in. The sun is setting. We can just have a look at the map. Oops, got to switch off all the all the gubbins. Yeah, the map looks spectacular with the sunset mod on. This is one of my favourite mods in the entire game. Is the the good old sunset mod? Yeah, it looks ace. Looks really good. Especially like the churches and stuff, the way that they cast the shadows. Yeah, it's good. This should have been a feature in the sort of game from the beginning. Now, a lot of people frown on the fact that I always say that it, the game should have had a day-night cycle, but it should really... It should have been an option, because it looks absolutely spectacular with the the sunset mod on. doesn't look so great at night. There used to be a night mod, and in the skybox where the sun is, there used to be a moon that gave this blue sort of light over everything. And for some reason, uh, the mod... The mod still worked, but the moon had disappeared, so it was just pure darkness. And it was it was phenomenally dark. It was very difficult to see anything. But yeah, we'll jump back on our train, because it's ready to go. Right, so here we go. Time to roll again. So we're still unloading. Unloading a wee bit. Just a, a little bit left to unload. And then we are off again, leaving the docks. There we go, there's a steamship. No, that's a Denara castle over there. Yeah, the windows are all blacked out. Everyone has gone home for the evening. Palm tree, native to, uh, native to Stockton. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why even if you've got temperate buildings or temperate climate, map zone, etc. selected, when random AI buildings spawn in, they sometimes have palm trees in their garden, which is kind of weird. And I, I suspect it's because probably the 1850s buildings are used in the, well, the dry the temperate and the tropical map, the buildings don't change, so I suppose there is a ra random chance for the odd palm tree uh, to spawn when a building is being spawned, so that's kind of weird, but I'd love to remove all the palm trees, save them for a map that actually needs them. Like the Florida map, once we actually get there. That'll be a long time, a long time where we see the, the Florida map. Not so long until we see the USA map. I mean, I need to research more into the USA because there's some conflicting, there are some conflicting things on Wikipedia about what the first steam train in the US actually was. So yeah, I need to look sort of deeper into that. But it should be approaching fast. It's going to be interesting because my jigsaw, American jigsaw puzzle, is uh, is kind of weird. I was going to do it state by state, but obviously some states like Texas, etc., are extremely large. So it was it was actually difficult to get the entire state of Texas, even on a a megalomaniac size map. It was difficult to get it in without having all the cities and towns being sort of bunched up and too close to each other. So I still actually need to figure out something for that. California as well. California is quite long. So I, it, was, it was kind of difficult. I'd probably have to do a 1x2 map for that. That's another one I'm stuck on. New York as well. Building up New York, London, Paris, Berlin, major cities, Tokyo, etc. is going to be extremely difficult. Especially when we start building them from like 1850. Because the buildings obviously change drastically over time. And I sort of need to account for that. So it means doing a lot of building 
and then a lot of deleting and reworking the cities later as time progresses. I like these trees on the left hand side, however, the further they are away, the more darker their leaves spawn in, and the closer they are, the more transparent the leaves are. I'm kind of confused why that is. I'm quite impressed with this little bunker area, the coal bunker area that I did here. Obviously the writing on that door over there is German. Uh, the modders that made it were German, I th think. So, yeah. But there is tons of, when it comes to doing like Germany and Switzerland and Austria, there's literally tons of those mods. There are a few places that are, have sort of few and far between mods. There's not many French sort of built rolling stock. There's not many build, uh, Belgium sort of built rolling stock. There is a lot of Spanish Renfe stuff that sort of comes on the go, but it's sort of later on. So I need to sort of work on it. Now some places are fine. Like for example, France uh, basically imported a lot of steam engines from the UK, which is magic because then you can use them because they probably exist. Maybe not if they're in something like a BR livery or something or, but if they're just in like a plain black livery, the standard black, then by all means they should be, should be easy enough to use. Right, this is what I was slightly terrified of rolling into Darlington here is that we were going to get stuck behind the passenger train and we are. Although, this signal's gonna let me go, right? No, it is. Oh, that's a signal for the other side. But this signal here is gonna stop me. No, it's, ah, oh, there's another signal ahead. Right, I need to actually delete that signal ahead because it means trains parked here would block this junction. And now we've stopped. Ah, well, I do see the other signal just ahead. We'll speed it up a touch. In fact, we'll three times speed it while we're waiting for them to disappear. So he should pass the signal now. There we go. And we're rolling again. Here's the other steam train coming in. Getting a load down to the docks for the night shift to unload since the sun is setting. I suppose this is the sunset mod, but you could probably have this as dawn as well. So you could say it's first thing in the morning. It's entirely up to you. By all means, the sunset mod is great. I've never had any game crashes with it, but there are some comments on the Steam Workshop of Horror Stories. Uh, I actually saw a couple of comments. Two guys uh, said that it, it totally destroyed entire save games, uh, but I just use it for the purpose of this, so it doesn't really matter. I don't save the game after this, uh, if you don't save a game after you've uploaded new mods, when you go to load it again, you'll have to add those those mods back in because they won't be saved. So that's what I do. I thought we were going to be stuck behind this train, but I think it's going to hit the next signal before we hit this one, which is nice. However, it is going to have to wait for the preceding passenger train to come out of uh, Bishop Auckland Station and then go past. So we are going to get stuck behind this train again. Unless that train has already departed and then if it has, we're sort of good to go. Here we go though, we're sort of creeping up behind it. The awesome power of the steam loco. The horses are being put to shame. Their time of rolling heavy loads on the rails is coming to an end which is probably a godsend for them because it's probably back breaking brutal work hauling wagons up and down a track all day so for them the steam loco was a magnificent leap in technology <laughs> that is a huge weight off their backs as you could see Right, so we're rolling again. I see the other passenger train. That's nice. Because I do believe that 
these passenger trains fold off onto the right hand side and load in the right hand side platform I think. Now when it comes to 1833 we'll be able to replace the horses with the the steam locos. Uh, probably these ones, there is another steam loco uh, that was used here at Stockton and Darlington early on it was the the Wilbur Force and we do have that as a mod so we'll be replacing the coal wagons with the Wilbur Force uh, the coal trains with the Wilbur Force but we'll be adding the the passenger train or we'll be adding these the locomotion and types like it to passenger haulage I'm looking forward to using the Wilbur Force it's quite a long train it looks really cool it's, a, it's another one of Steve M4's mods again. Looks great. Right, I stand corrected. It looks as if this train. Ah, oh no. Well, we're just waiting for it to pass the signal. But it doesn't look like it's moving off to the right hand side. It looks like it's staying to the left. So I could be wrong. Let's double speed it. There we go. There's the farm, a little farm. You can see the wagons on the road. Bit of wilderness here. I love the plants. The plants are great mods as well. And they really fill in those those sort of blank areas. Again, they might kill frame rate. This is my first time using them, so I'm not too sure. There we go, we've got a little shed there. Someone's house. We're passing Greg's. See if when you see Greg's from the back, it just looks like a <laughs> just looks like an old school Victorian building. Right lady, you need to stop or you're gonna die. Oh you're going into the train station. And you just walk through my fence. That's awesome. There we go. So the train did stop at the right. Ooh, there's a bear. Now the bear is making a run for it. Where are you going, bear? Running through the fields of lavender. <laughs> and this, these are fields of, is it dandelions or chamomile? I don't know. I just need, I just wanted more variety of fields. I love the ploughed fields here on the right hand side. Although it's slightly, the ploughage looks slightly neat. For 1820s because it would have been it would have been horse with plow attached there was no tractors way back then oh we've got the farm as well yeah the farm's good I like the farm farmhouse in the left hand side medieval farmhouse looks absolutely awesome signal box looks awesome your standard UK signal box as we head back into the mines. And we stay on the left, yes, we stay on the left. Slowing down a fair bit, it's okay though. Lots and lots of coal bunkers here, because, well, that is what we're loading, coal and only coal. I love the fact that these little cranes animate as well. That's pretty cool. But here we are, we have arrived at our destination. So, we shall leave it there for that, that episode. Just a little drive-by on board the train. Uh, as always, if you did watch this and you would like to leave a like, comment or dislike, please feel free to do so. And if there is more you would like to see in the future, then hit the subscribe button. I've been Danny Min, this has been Transport Fever 2, around the world in time, and I will catch us later.